Hi everyone, Mr. Morgan Lewis here at the school. Today we're going to go through some line work techniques from the pattern dang gun. And uh, we're, we're going to concentrate on the, uh, the movements that are in it that don't come across in previous patterns, i.e. John G. So, go into, into your ready position. Okay, so parallel stance, feet pointing forward, arms curved, and uh, making sure you've got a straight back in your, in your, your relaxed position. Okay, so we're going to concentrate on... Uh, on four main moves, four main moves, okay? So we're in ready position. Now, a lot of this pattern is based in L stance. So a lot of the moves we're about to do are in that stance as well. So make sure you pay attention to the footwork and how the heels are in line and the distribution of the, of the weight of the legs, uh, which has been explained in previous videos before, but it will also be included in this. Okay, so the first one we're gonna do is a knife hand guardian block and the correct chain before it. So from here, when you step forward, uh, I'm going to step forward with this leg, so I want you to mirror me, and therefore mirror where my arms go. Well, what I want you to do is step this leg through, arms up like this. So what you want is your furthest arm stretched right back, and you want this one just in front of the shoulder here. We want to make sure our hands are closed, because when we do the movement, they open up as they come through. Okay, so you're going to step forward, feet together, arms up. You're going to go into L stance, and bring your hands forward like so. So I'll just change the angle slightly. So what you've got is heels in line, you've got your front foot pointing forward, your back foot pointing to the side, so it's 90 degrees from each other, and you've got your thumbs tucked, as you know from when you do knife hand movements or ridge hand movements, it's always thumb tucked. You've got one hand on your chest or on your side flexors, and this one's in front of your shoulder. It's not too high, although some patterns do call for it to be high, but in general, we want to keep it so that this is level with the shoulder. Okay, so coming forward, knife hand guarding block an L stance, so it's arms up here. And then when we come forward again, we swing the arms. And when I do this in lessons, I tend to always refer to the pinky side <laughs> just to make it a bit easy to remember. But you swing your arms to the pinky side, stepping through. Notice my feet are together, okay? And you go to here. Now the reason that's so important is because if you go forward and do this with your foot, what you'll actually find is nine times out of 10, as you drop into the movement, that you'll be here. And you can see that my weight is now 50-50. So that's what we call fixed stance, <clears throat> which is the same as an L stance, but instead of it 70-30, it's 50-50 and thus a little bit longer. So from one and a half to two shoulder widths, all right? So again, that's a stance in itself, but it's not the one we want for this movement. And the knife hand guiding block does work very well with the L stance and the dropping back action into it, okay? So from here, go forward. When you go forward again, feet together. Now I want you to watch on my back leg. I'm gonna move the foot out just enough, but I'm gonna bend this knee and drop into the stance. So from here, I've instantly got 70-30 in weight. So now if I do it again on this side, here, then go down, and it's more placing emphasis on bending the leg and just stepping this one out. So we're not actually leaning forward, okay? <clears throat> if you look at where I am in the camera right now, if you, if you see, I actually just go straight down into that leg. Okay, so that's really important there. Now we're gonna stay in L stance for the next one. And we're gonna do a twin outer forearm block. Okay, now twin outer forearm block means that both arms are doing the same thing. So your chamber should be crossing at the wrists, but it should be palms facing you, or backs of hands pointing that way. Okay, so I'm gonna come forward, make a chamber, L stance again, twin outer forearm block. The golden rule with this move is highest hand over back leg. All right, so we've got our elbow and shoulder in line, so I'll turn at this angle. Elbow and shoulder in line, and then there's a straight line all the way down across to that leg, all right? So from here, if I now step this leg into walking stance, you can see that that is a rising block, which we'll come to in a minute. But from here, we're in this position, okay? Elbow and shoulder in line, and this one is in front of the shoulder, and what we want is our palms facing outwards. We don't want this hand overturned, okay, because that exposes all the flesh here. We want to make sure we turn it so our thumb side is pointing towards our nose. Uh, another way Mr. Martin describes it is if he sticks out the pinky finger, if you can see the tip of your pinky finger, then that's correct. If you can see the whole thing, you've overturned. If you can't see it at all, you've, you've not turned enough. So you just need to see the tip of your pinky finger, okay? So from here, come forward, there. Again, placing emphasis on the L stance. So when I go forward this time, chamber, and it's the same as what I said with the knife and guarding block. 
drop into your back leg, move the foot out and twist here. So you're not actually placing too much emphasis on dropping your weight forward. The key to the L stance is to sit back. Okay, so we're here and then come forward a few more times. So there, and then go backward here. So you can see the chamber and the footwork are working together. Okay, so you've got twin out of forearm lock. Now this time, I mentioned it just, just a second ago, but now we're gonna go into walking stance and do a rising block. So you're gonna go in ready position again. You're gonna go forward, back to wrist, okay? And it's the blocking hand on the inside of the chamber. Walking stance, rising block. Now, let me refer to what I said before. If I move this foot into L stance and turn that way now, that is the exact same position as we need to do twin out of forearm block. So that arm, that elbow should be in line with that shoulder still. Okay, and then when you do this, Walking stance, okay, two shoulder widths in, in length. So you wanna keep your heels down, bend your front knee, back leg locked out, one shoulder width wide. You have to pay attention quite a bit to this part because if you're doing this movement with your feet in line, you're out of balance. The only reason it works in the L stance is because you're placing weight on that back leg. From here, because your weight is spread evenly, doing this, counter, but it's, it's just not gonna help you. So you need to push yourself into that stance, wide, nice and long. Rising block, reaction hand back here. Okay, so when you come forward now, reaction hand straight on top of that hand. And remember what I've said in previous videos, imagine you've got a watch in your hand, okay, and you cover it with that one. So you step forward, chamber, and then push. On this one, you wanna have your shoulders pointing forward, not quite as far back. When you did the low block in Chonji, which is also in Dan Gun, by the way, your shoulder back here is pushed back slightly. On the rising block, it's forward, okay? And again, if you stuck your pinky finger out, you should only see the tip, or your knuckle of your thumb should be pointing to your center of your nose. So you know you've got the correct turn amount. Okay, and then step forward again, rising block, and then backwards, and then backwards, and then backwards. Okay, last one now, this time, L stance one more time, but this time we're gonna go into L stance, knife hand strike. Now, that one chambers from the inside, okay? Just the same as the rising block. So from here, L stance, back to wrist, and then as you go into the movement, you strike out ahead of you, and this one pulls back to your waist. Boom, like so. So you've got this arm outstretched, you've got this one pulled right back here, heels in line, bending your back leg, placing emphasis on that. So then when you step forward again, back to wrist, and then it chops out whilst this one pulls back here. Do it from this angle quickly. Okay, so chamber, boom into that knife hand strike. So you've got a nice straight back, you're pulling this back right here, okay? Squeeze those shoulder blades together, bend that back leg, and we're here. Chamber, boom. Now backwards, chamber, drop. Remember, when you're working L stances, really place the emphasis on feet together and dropping into the leg, not necessarily uh, leaning back or leaning far forward. Okay, now, let's recap on each one. So, I'll do each one forward, and I'll do it to the side as well, so you can see all the angles. So, forward we had my fan guarding block and L stance. Then we had twin out of forearm block. Then we had the rising block, the walking stance. And then we had knife hand strike and L stance. So now this time, do it from this angle, so you can see. Okay, so, knife hand guarding block, twin out of forearm block, rising block, knife hand strike. Okay, so those are some basic movements from Dan Gunn. So practice those religiously, work those stances, work those chambers, and uh, that'll give you a good foundation for doing the pattern itself. Remember, you can um, you can see the pattern done on the uh, on the members page, but uh, you know, other than that, at the moment, you've got the uh, movements just one at a time. Okay, so those movements are from the pattern Dan Gunn, and uh, practice those really hard. Let us know you get on in the comments, share the video, and uh, look out for more pattern related content in coming videos. All right, take care of yourselves.